One of the exciting things about a large language model is you could use it to build a custom chatbot with only a modest amount of effort. ChatGPT, the web interface, is a way for you to have a conversational interface, a conversation via a large language model. But one of the cool things is you can also use a large language model to build your custom chatbot to maybe play the role of an AI customer service agent or an AI order taker for a restaurant. Um, and in this video, you learn how to do that for yourself. I'm going to describe the components of the OpenAI chat completions format in more detail, and then you're going to build a chatbot yourself. So let's get into it. So first we'll set up the OpenAI Python package as usual. So chat models like ChatGPT are actually trained to take a series of messages as input and return a model generated message as output. And so although the chat format is designed to make multi-turn conversations like this easy, we've kind of seen through the previous videos that um, it's also just as useful for single turn tasks without any conversation. And so next we're going to um, kind of define two helper functions. So this is the one that we've been using throughout all the videos and it's um, the get completion function. But if you kind of look at it, we give a prompt, but then kind of inside the function, what we're actually doing is putting this prompt into what looks, um, what looks like some kind of user message. And this is because the chat GBT, um, model as a chat model, which means it's trained to take a series of messages as input and then return um, model generated message as output. So the user message is kind of the input and then the assistant message is the output. So in this video, we're going to actually use a different helper function. And instead of kind of putting a single prompt as input and getting a single completion, we're going to pass in a list of messages. And these messages can be kind of from a variety of different roles. So I'll describe those. So here's an example of a list of messages. And so the first message is a system message, which kind of gives an overall instruction. And then after this message, we have um, kind of turns between the user and the assistant. And this will kind of continue to go on. And if you've ever used ChatGPT, the web interface, then you, your messages are the user messages and then ChatGPT's messages are the assistant messages. So the system message helps to kind of set the behavior and persona of the assistant, and it acts as kind of a high level instruction for the conversation. So you can kind of think of it as whispering in the assistant's ear and kind of guiding its responses without the user being aware of the system message. So as the user, if you've ever used ChatGPT, you probably don't know what's in ChatGPT's system message, and that's kind of the intention. The benefit of the system message is that it provides you, the developer, with a way to kind of frame the, the conversation without making the request itself part of the conversation. So you can kind of um, guide the assistant and kind of whisper in its ear um, and guide its responses without making the user aware. So now let's try to use these messages in a conversation. So we'll use our new helper function to get the completion from the messages. And we're also using a higher temperature. So the system message says, you are an assistant that speaks like Shakespeare. So this is us kind of describing to the assistant how it should behave. And then the first user message is, tell me a joke. The next is, why did the chicken cross the road? And then the final user message is, I don't know. So if we run this, the response is to get to the other side. Let's try again. To get to the other side, fair sir or madame, it is an olden classic that never fails. So there's our Shakespearean response. And let's actually try one more thing because I want to make it even clearer um, that this is the assistant message. So here, let's just go and print the, um, the entire message response. So just to make this even clearer, um, this response is an assistant message. So the role is assistant and then the, the content is the message itself. So that's what's happening in this helper function. We're just kind of passing out the content of the message.
So now let's do another example. So here our messages are, um, the system message is you're a friendly chatbot and the first user message is, hi, my name is Issa. And we want to um, get the first user message. So let's execute this for the first assistant message. And so the first message is, hello Issa, it's nice to meet you. How can I assist you today? Now let's try another example. So here our messages are, um, system message, you're a friendly chatbot. And the first user message is, yes, can, can you remind me what, what, what is my name? And let's get the response. And as you can see, the model doesn't actually um, know my name. So each conversation with a language model is a standalone interaction, which means that you must provide all relevant messages for the model to draw from in the current conversation. If you want the model to draw from or quote unquote remember earlier parts of a conversation, you must provide the earlier exchanges in the input to the model. And so we'll refer to this as context. So let's try this. So now we've kind of given the context that the model needs, um, which is my name in the previous messages, and we'll ask the same question. So we'll ask what my name is. And the model is able to respond because it has all of the context it needs um, in this kind of list of messages that we input to it. So now you're going to build your own chatbot. This chatbot is going to be called Autobot and we're going to automate the collection of user prompts and assistant responses in order to build this order bot. And it's going to take orders at a pizza restaurant. So first we're going to define this helper function. And what this is doing is it's going to kind of collect our user messages so we can avoid typing them in by hand in the same, in the way that we did above. And this is going to kind of collect prompts from a user interface that we'll build below and then append it to a list called context and then it will call the model with that context every time. And the model response is then also added to the context. So the kind of um, model message is added to the context, the user message is added to the context, so on. So it just kind of grows longer and longer. This way the model has the information it needs to determine what to do next. And so now we'll set up and run this kind of UI to display the order bot. And so here's the context and it contains the system message that contains the menu. And note that every time we call the language model, we're going to use the same context and the context is building up over time. And then let's execute this. Okay, I'm going to say, hi, I would like to order a pizza. And the assistant says, great, what pizza would you like to order? We have pepperoni, cheese, and eggplant pizza. Hmm. How much are they? Great, okay, we have the prices. I think I'm feeling a medium eggplant pizza. So as you can imagine, we could kind of continue this conversation. And let's kind of look at what we've put in the system message. So you are Autobot, an automated service to collect orders for a pizza restaurant. You first greet the customer, then collect the order, and then ask if it's a pickup or delivery. You wait to collect the entire order, then summarize it and check for a final time if the customer wants to add anything else. If it's a delivery, you can ask for an address. Finally, you collect the payment. Make sure to clarify all options, extras, and sizes to uniquely identify the item from the menu. You, resp you respond in a short, very conversational, friendly style. The menu includes, and then here we have the menu. So let's go back to our conversation um, and let's see if the assistant kind of has been following the instructions. Okay, great. The assistant asks if we want any toppings, which we kind of specified in the system message. 
So I think we want no extra toppings. Sure thing. Is there anything else we'd like to order? Hmm. Let's get some water. Actually, fries. Small or large? And this is great because we kind of um, asked the assistant in the system message to kind of clarify extras and sides. So. And so you get the idea and please feel free to play with this yourself. Um, you can pause the video and just go ahead and run this in your own notebook on the left. And so now we can ask the model to create a JSON summary um, that we could send to the order system based on the conversation. So we're now appending another system message, which is an instruction. And we're saying create a JSON summary of the previous food order, itemize the price for each item. The fields should be one pizza, include side, two list of toppings, three list of drinks, and four list of sides, and finally the total price. And you could also um, use a user message here. This does not have to be a system message. So let's execute this. And notice in this case, we're using a lower temperature because for these kinds of tasks, we want the output to be fairly predictable. For a conversational agent, you might want to use a higher temperature. However, in this case, I would maybe use a lower temperature as well because for a customer um, assistant chatbot, you might want the, the output to be, to be a, a bit more predictable as well. And so here we have the summary of our order. And so we could submit this to the, the order system if we wanted to. So there we have it. You've built your very own ch order chatbot feel free to kind of customize it yourself and play around with the system message um, to kind of change the behavior of the chatbot and kind of get it to act as different personas with different knowledge.